Hey everyone, it's your soul. And I wonder if you've ever had time to think about the subject of Google and search engines and what's actually involved in the process of you searching for something and finding the search results in your browser. It's not the easiest thing to study. And if you've ever run your own website or spoken to people that have, you might know already that it's actually quite difficult sometimes to get your pages to appear in Google search results, definitely near the top of a search result, especially if there's competition for the phrase that, that the people are searching for that you want to rank for. And there's a whole industry that sprung up around that, around optimizing pages and websites to make them perform well in Google and search engines, which is called search engine optimization or SEO. And it's quite an esoteric and complex study in a way because the algorithms and systems used by Google are, first of all, secret, proprietary. Secondly, they involve hundreds of different pieces of information that are used within them to produce the results you see in your browser. So to try to reverse engineer and understand exactly what you need to be working on to get your page near the top of Google is not an easy thing to do. Google attempt to make this simpler by giving out advice and training and so on to people and say, give best practices. But the reality is that their algorithms are more complicated than the information they give out. And that's left the door open for many, many people and businesses to specialize in performing services for people who run websites and teaching people on how to basically win in, in the complex competition of getting to the top of the search results. And Google, as I understand it, still commands something like 60 to 70% market share for searching on the online. So basically, if you're optimizing your page for search, search engine success, then it really means you're optimizing it for Google. And what we're looking at here is a page called the Periodic Table of SEO Success Factors. And I'm going to take you through here briefly to demonstrate how it's possible for Google to basically be configured in such a way that the success that a website experiences in searches and therefore the amount of traffic it gets from searches for free is somewhat dependent on whether or not it's a large organization. In other words, their system skews traffic to be more likely to go towards large organizations, corporations, universities, governments and so on. It makes it much more difficult for newcomers to compete and to e actually even be heard. So if you're, let's say, a genius inventor who's come up with a new idea for some kind of healthcare or therapy, and you're happy to give it away for free, but you don't have any budget to market your idea, then if you just post that around the internet, the chances are you're not going to be seen on Google when people search for the problem that you're solving, even if you have the best solution. Because what people are actually going to see when they search in Google is pages from corporations and companies and uh, universities and media sources and newspapers and so on that relate to the keywords they've typed in. They're not going to see your page. And if we scroll through some of the points on this list, you'll start to understand why that is. It's important to understand this because this is not obvious. And, if you know, it's not like Google explains this to you when you use their service. They don't say, oh, yeah, we're going to show you the web, but by the way, it's going to be heavily filtered according to these parameters. They just say, hey, type a search in and we'll show you what's on the internet. So this is split down the middle between on the page SEO and off the page SEO. Each of these entries on this page, they've given a score to. And so the most important ones have plus three and... You know, in other words, if you achieve uh, this factor well on your page, then you get a big bonus of three points. On the other end of things, if you do something negatively, then you actually lose points. So if you do one of these things, like your page is too thin in content um, or it has keyword stuffing, that's what this refers to, which basically means you fill your page with keywords hoping to rank well in Google, even though the page really doesn't have much value, then you lose points. Things like this... You know, they, they make sense. They they should be in there in a, in a search algorithm. You do want pages with high quality and good titles and good descriptions to rank well in Google. That makes sense. Uh, you don't want pages full of 
thin content and keyword stuffing or spam to be ranking well in Google or in a search engine. That makes sense. The problems come in that what actually classes as quality and spam is subjective to some extent. And But that's not even the biggest problem. What I really want to draw your attention to is this part. So we've got authority, we've got quality, we've got country, we've got reputation. And so these are, as it says, off the page SEO, which means basically issues which relate to the page, but which are not directly related to the content of the page as a document. They are peripheral information. So authority, it's an interesting term, isn't it? It's very important, but what actually is it? Well, to my understanding, authority in this context refers to what Google calls domain authority. And what they've done is every single, is basically give a score internally that you can't see to every website domain name that is out there that has a live website on it. And the higher the score you have, the more chance there is of your pages reaching the top of Google, even if the content on the page is not so relevant to the search that someone's looking for. If you've got a high authority domain, then there's a good chance you're going to appear at the top, which is why if you search for some, you know, some keywords sometimes or words in Google, you'll find that pages from Wikipedia or pages from dictionary websites, that kind of thing, come at the top, even when perhaps the word isn't even in the dictionary or the Wikipedia page isn't really that interesting compared to other pages. They still reach the top because the dictionary site and the Wikipedia domain and other domains like that have a very high authority. So therefore, Google classes them as being a good source of information for you. Uh, and you can see, you know, just by looking at the fact that they also apply country here, um, potentially there's lots of room in here for manipulation and kind of uh, important pages getting lost and, and you know, lots of skewing in the data. Uh, reputation as well is another one. I mean, what, what exactly does that mean? Reputation. Is Google literally able to go and accurately assess the reputation of every web page and every domain out there who's who's defining the reputation how do they calculate that it's i mean that this is linking into social networks so it could just be as simple as looking at the number of likes that a post has received or the number of shares that the domain has had and that kind of thing um setting aside the fact that it is possible to look up the number of shares and so on that facebook and google plus put out and log for each site and when I've done that for my domain it was massively under what it actually is because I know I've seen how many times my page has been shared at, shared at times and the number of shares was nowhere near it was not recorded as being anywhere near as high as I know it actually is so aside from the manipulation that's going on the actual fundamental schematic and design of their search system is fundamentally skewed towards um, groups that they want to have success and makes it harder for groups that they don't want to have success to have success. Because no matter how well you build your page, no matter how awesome it is from a, an SEO perspective, you can have the perfect titles, the perfect page content, everything is scientifically calculated literally to, according to best known practices and so on, years of experience. You can have the best page ever that's possible to have for that topic and you still won't rank anywhere near the top. And that can be down basically to what they call trust and other things as well. It's not as simple as that, but this trust factor is is a real pain. And they ascribe trust to governments. They ascribe it to mainstream media. They ascribe it to universities, that kind of thing. Basically, what we would call in brackets the establishment. Those people who are authorised by someone somewhere who's somehow got authority to share information and you know as you're growing up in society you often are taught that universities and academics and corporations and the people with the most money they're the people who know the most they're the smartest most experienced people the experts in these subjects they're the ones who you should listen to and that makes sense because obviously those are the people often that have dedicated their lives to certain specialized subjects they've proved in some way shape or form that they are among the best in that field and they've published documents and so on and you can say well yeah that that makes sense i can understand that what you're not being told and what you're not seeing is that these people often are actually not the best in the field often they've been put there 
in a manipulative way by certain entities to further an agenda. And, you know, the the people who are the real experts get sidelined, bought off, even killed in some cases, uh, so that certain groups can have the power in society. And you would never know that unless you really dug deeply into it. And you are likely to be called crazy, paranoid, conspiracy theorist, all these names. But in reality, there's so much evidence that this has actually happened uh, that you'd be foolish to close your mind off to the possibility of it. So this is one of the reasons why it's such a huge problem to have these establishment um, organisations being given artificially high ranking in, in any search engine. They should be there based on the quality and content of the page and also what society itself thinks of that page based on the links that they create themselves on their own pages to that page which is how google originally worked originally as i understand it it was based a lot more on link value so if you had a page with a thousand links to coming to it from other websites then that would be better than having a page that had 10 links coming to it from other websites that's how it was originally but there was a lot of manipulation obviously as i'm sure you can imagine with that and people were just creating websites and filling it with lots of links to other websites that they wanted to boost up and you know it created this whole false manipulated search result listings actually caused by other people outside of Google trying to get artificially to the top of the list. So part of their solution to that was to introduce this authority system, which you can sort of understand how that might make sense, but it's all it's really done is moved the power to manipulate the search rankings away from people in the world who are trying to artificially boost their own sites or their client sites and towards the establishment authoritative so-called domains who Google determines have that authority. So it really hasn't achieved any kind of, generally speaking, in my opinion, uh, an improvement, let's say, much of an improvement on their rankings in terms of the relative usefulness of the results they produce. All it's really done is just allowed different people to manipulate what you see. Uh, So, you know, it is an issue. How do you assess the value of a web page? It's not a simple thing, is it? Even for a human let alone for a computer, you can assess it from your own perspective, what you think is a good web page, but that doesn't mean to say that anyone else is going to agree with you. So it is a complex problem. But from my perspective and from many other people's perspectives who have found, you know, via the recent and ongoing whistleblowing from various Silicon Valley companies, including Google, they do downlist and blacklist websites based on their own political biases. So it's not even enough that they artificially skew the results towards those groups that have enough time, money and establishment credentials to be classed as high authority domains. They also go a step further. And if you happen to somehow get around that and get to the top of the search results for something, then there's a good chance they're going to put you down anyway, because you disagree with what they want to be true and what people to be thinking. So, you know, the the angle of the whistleblowers showing us these blacklisting lists is one important aspect to us learning the corruption of Google. Um, However, this other aspect, which is actually structural and inherent to their entire method of producing search results, is also very important. And it's just another reason why, first of all, you should never blindly trust the search results you see in, in Google as if it's all there is on the internet, because it definitely isn't. There's definitely a lot of content that they're not showing you. Secondly, why you probably shouldn't be using Google in the first place and you should consider using alternatives and whatever's available. So, I mean, for a long time, I avoided using Bing, which is Microsoft search engine, because I don't really trust Microsoft either, uh, and and other search engines. But as it turns out, I've been using DuckDuckGo, and from what I understand, they are actually using Bing's data, and they're a lot less censored. So for the moment, you know, check them out. Check DuckDuckGo out. It's a privacy site, basically, more so than if you just use Bing directly. And... Let's also put lots of focus, if we can, into developing our new social network systems, which actually render all of this irrelevant. It can't be that difficult, can it, to, for us to make like a decentralized, perhaps blockchain-based search engine, which is transparent and where everybody can see how we got the search results that we're looking at. We should be able to see the algorithms. We should be able to know how they got there, and they should be good enough that they can't really be gamed. So even if I and you and everyone can see the algorithms, it's still difficult for us to actually game them and and get our pages to the top. Plus, by having an open source search engine, it means that more people can look at the algorithms, can improve it, 
And when we see that things are being scammed and gamed, we can all look at the algorithm, or everybody who's qualified and knows how to do it, can look at the algorithms and say, well, here's the problem, here's the solution. And then, as with many things on blockchains, we could have a vote, let's say, and maybe get that forked into the blockchain, into the code, and now that problem's been solved. That's a real community-based wisdom of the crowd approach to searching, exactly as the internet really should be. It's, it's a, the internet is a reflection of us in, 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 in technology, and we should therefore be the ones determining how that works, not some centralized alphabet soup agency using proprietary secret code that's known to manipulate and regularly gets multi-billion dollar fines for uh, basically criminal activity that causes real people real harm. So yeah, I do happen to know of a couple of blockchain projects that claim to be doing this and actually introducing um, search engine technology, more or less as I described, blockchain-based, but as yet I haven't seen them actually produce anything. If you do know of any uh, projects that maybe I don't know about or have any interesting info on that subject, then definitely let us know in the comments. And just want to remind you again that Eureka.org, my social network that I've been running for many years, has never really had the traffic it deserves, primarily because Google has downlisted it. Uh, I put a video out recently showing that if you search for U-R-E-K-A in Google, my site doesn't even appear until many, many pages down. And even then, it's not even the home page. Whereas if you do that in Bing and uh, Yahoo and Google, DuckDuckGo and so on, it comes up as the first viable website in the search. So... You know, these other sites say my site's the most important one for that domain name or that keyword, and Google says it doesn't even rank anywhere. So, you know, it's pretty obvious to me that they've blacklisted my site, and I would say that's for political reasons. They may say, oh, it's because you're sharing links from other sites on it and so on, but, you know, Pinterest, Facebook, many, many sites uh, are full of links to other websites, but guess what? They're not downranked, are they? So, um, you know, so anyway... As I said, if you've got any useful info on this, do let me know. If you want to help me even solve the problem with Eureka, I'd definitely be appreciative of that, and I'll do everything I can to help you out as well. So, um, yeah, definitely interested to see what anybody has to say on this. As usual, upvote, like, subscribe, re-steam, re-blog, share and pass on to everyone who you think might be interested, and uh, let's work together to make all of this a lot better for everyone. Peace.